Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councillor Thompson hopefully will join us a little bit. I'll call the meeting to order. Our land acknowledgement statement. We acknowledge with respect to the history, spirituality, culture of the Anna Ashkenpec people as the three parts known as Ojibwe, Odawa, and Parawani nations who have inhabited this land from time to world. Further give thanks to Chippewa Saugeen, the Chippewa of Maywash, now known as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as the traditional keepers of this land. We also recognize the Métis and Inuit whose ancestors shared this land and these waters. May we all, the treaty people, live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all its diverse people. Approval of the agenda. Or is there any, any member who would like to add anything to the agenda here today? <laughs> Madam Clerk, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to request an addition of a discussion regarding council attendance at Remembrance Day celebrations. And I would like to add that to new bit this week. Okay, thank you. The recommendation is that the agenda be amended to include a discussion regarding Remembrance Day celebration attendance under new business and that the agenda be approved as amended. Someone to move to put on the floor, please. Moved by Council Sullivan, second by Councilor Colburn. Is there any discussion on the motion before us? Seeing none, I throw a hands all in favor, please. The motion is carried. Declaration of carrying your interest. Do you declare any time to see fit during the meeting? We're down to public hearings. Recommendation is that the uh, regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be recessed to host public hearings for the following zoning bylaw amendment applications. Z1021 for Eric and Blair Deerhoff for property located at 89 Portland Street and Z1221 Aaron and Andrea uh, Matt Schiller for property located at four. For property located at 545 Beach Road. Someone to move to put on the floor, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Carlton, second by Councilor Pringle. Uh, if there's no discussion on motion before us, so I show my hands all in favor. The motion is carried. Madam Clerk, there seems to be quite an echo. My mic is, is, is there anything I can do from here or no? No? Okay. So, first public meeting. I would like to call this public meeting to order. This meeting has been called for the purpose of considering an application for proposed zoning bylaw amendment application Z1021 for Eric and Blair Deerhoff for property located at 89 Portland Street. Would the clerk please advise those present at the method by which the notice of motion of this meeting was given? Madam Clerk. Did Carol sign on open the air on Teams? Paul turned it on. Yeah, okay. Can I remove you, Kathy? He's on Teams? No. Not now. I just got an message just in there on air because you can't hear. The apologies for those participating virtually, just some sound difficulties in the uh, in the council chambers. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I will uh, move forward with providing notice of this public meeting. So notice of this public meeting was given by ordinary mail to all property owners within 120 meters, 400 feet of the subject property by email to all prescribed bodies on September 22nd, 2021, posted at the subject property and posted on the township of George Buff's website. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the township of George Buff's before the proposed zoning bylaw is adopted or passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Township of Georgia Bluffs, the local planning appeal tribunal, and the person or public body may not, may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the tribunal, unless in the opinion of said tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Thank you, Madam Kirk. 
Would the planner please explain the purpose and effect of the proposed applications, whether any correspondence have been received to date? I see you paying planner Jen, are you there, please? Hi, um, I'm going to be presenting the oh, uh, oh, report this evening. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, no uh, correspondence was received from the public in respect to this application. Um, so this application is proposing to rezone the lands at 89 Portland Street in Shallow Lake from OS1 open space to R1 residential in order to permit the construction of a detached garage accessory to the dwelling existing on the property. So currently the uh, OS1 zoning doesn't permit residential development, including accessory structures. The garage complies with uh, all other uh, relevant provisions of the zoning bylaw and no other relief is requested. Um, the subject property is located in the Shallow Lake Secondary Settlement Area as per the Gray County Official Plan and Township Official Plan and it's designated residential. Uh, the subject property is within a uh, Gray Sobel Conservation Authority uh, regulated area. A uh, pre-consultation with the Conservation Authority indicated no requirement for additional studies and indicated that a permit is required for development within the regulated area. So the provincial policy statement directs development outside of natural hazards. Um, Grace Sobel Conservation Authority um, has commented on this and notes that um, the natural hazards identified on the subject property include flooding and erosion potential uh, of a channelized water course. So to address this, uh, an engineered grading and drainage plan will be required as part of the uh, Gray Sobel permit application process. And that'll also address any changes um, to drainage patter patterns and site imperviousness. In addition, uh, the pol uh, provincial policy statement directs to protect natural heritage features for the long term. Um, so adjacent to the, the sub subject property are significant woodlands and provincially significant wetlands. Uh, however, um, Gray Sobel does not anticipate any negative impacts to these natural heritage features. So it's determined that the application is consistent with the provincial policy statement uh, and a full analysis of the uh, PPS policies is outlined in the planning report. So in terms of comments received on the application, uh, Gray uh, County planning staff have noted that provided positive comments are received from uh, Gray Sobel Conservation Authority. The county has no further concerns with the subject application. Uh, Gray Sobel Conservation noted uh, no objections to the approval of the subject application and notes that a permit will be required from uh, GSCA for any development or site alteration within the regulated area. Uh, the risk management office noted uh, that the property is not located within a source protection area where significant threat policies apply. Therefore, they had no comments on the application under the Clean Water Act. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, no public comments were received as a result of circulating the application. So to conclude, the application has demonstrated consistency with the Gray County official plan, the Township of Georgian Bluffs official plan, the provincial policy statement, and meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. Staff's recommendation at this time is council approve the application, application given that no concerns are raised at the public meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. No member of the public register of the clerk to provide comments and support of or opposition of the application. Applicant Eric Neroff is present this evening. Mr. Neroff, would you have any comments? If you do, please go ahead. I believe you're muted. You're still muted. There. Uh, not at the moment that I can think of. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Neroff. Does Council have any questions regarding the proposed app? Seeing none. Council will consider all matters placed before prior to submitting their comments to the 
applicant, may I call for adjournment of public meeting? Moved by Councillor Sullivan, seconded by Councillor Barfoot. All in favor of adjournment, show of hands, please. It's carried. I have a recommendation here, excuse me, that has been demonstrated that application Z1021 by Eric and Lear near up for lands described as Plan 156N Part Lot 19, Plan H57 Part Lot 35 RP 16R6795 Part 5 is consistent with the Provincial Policy Statement 2020, the County Gray Official Plan, Recolor Gray, and intent of the Township of George Bluff Zoning Bylaw 2020. If no concerns are raised at the public meeting, it is recommended that the application Z1021 be approved. Someone to move to put on the floor, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Carlton, second by Councillor Colburn. Is there any discussion on the motion before us? Seeing none, a show of hands, all in favor? The motion is carried. I welcome uh, Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry to uh, my colleagues for being a few minutes late. Okay, I'm going to go to our second public meeting. I will call this meeting, this public meeting to order. This meeting has been called for the purpose of considering an application for zoning bylaw amendment application Z12 for Eric and Andrea Metzler. I apologize for not pronouncing that right. Uh, for property located at 4 or 5 Bonnie Beach Road. Would the clerk please advise those present as to the method by which the notice of this meeting was given? Madam Clerk. Notice of this public meeting was given by ordinary mail to all property owners within 120 meters, 400 feet of the subject property by email to all the prescribed bodies on September 23rd, 2021, posted at the township of, or posted at the subject property posted on the township of Georgia Buffs website. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the township of Georgia Bluffs before the proposed zoning bylaw is adopted or passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the township of Georgia Bluffs to the local planning appeal tribunal, and the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Thank you, Madam Kirk. Would the junior planner please explain the purpose and effect of the proposed application, whether any correspondence have been received to date? Chloe, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm going to um, present this application. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a 50-50 chance of being right. Please, Jen, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. So the purpose of this application is to zone a section of the north end of the property uh, with a rural special zone, and that would be to permit a zero meter setback to the environmental protection, to the mapped environmental protection zone. This will uh, permit the Maeslers to build a detached dwelling um, on the property. An environmental impact study uh, and an engineer drainage plan were submitted in support of the application and they were accepted by the township and the Grace Hobble Conservation Authority. So the policy review and the staff planning report looks at provincial and county policies that address partial servicing, stormwater and protection of natural heritage features. So these three um, items were also raised as concerns by area residents and a commenting agency. So the Great County Official Plan designates this property as rural and hazard with a portion of inland lake and shoreline. It permits single detached dwellings within the rural designation and as we know, it uh, does not permit development within the hazard areas. So this property um, is actually an original lot within the Lakeview subdivision. And I'm showing this on in the planning report, it's image one on page two. So this property is effectively sandwiched between two settlement areas. So it's the settlement area of um, East Linton, as well as um, the inland lake and shoreline um, designation in the county plan. That's considered a settlement area. Uh, uh, within this area, it's partially serviced with municipal water and, uh, and septic systems. So 
The provincial policy statement doesn't permit the extension of new partial services uh, um, to a rural area. So for example, a water main, you wouldn't be permitted to extend a water main into a rural area unless there's a need to address a failed system. Um, while it doesn't permit that extension, um, it, does, it doesn't prohibit um, an existing lot from connecting to an existing system that's there. We know through the property file, reviewing the property file that um, this property has been paying an unconnected water um, fee to the township since 2004. There are service allocations for this property to connect to the East Linton water system. Um, in regards to natural um, heritage features, section 2.1 of the provincial policy statement does contain policies to, to protect natural features. So through a memorandum of understanding uh, with the township, the Conservation Authority has reviewed the proposed amendment and um, our noted satisfaction with the, with, the, um, with the environmental impact study that was conducted. What generally happens, sorry, I'm getting some feedback here. Um, what generally happens is when a, um, an environmental impact study is going to be um, conducted, the environmental consultant meets with the conservation authority and a terms of reference is established. So the, the study is done to, um, to meet those terms of reference. So the conservation authority reviewed that environmental impact study that was, was conducted by SAR Environmental. And um, in their opinion, um, with the implementation of the mitigation measures, uh, the proposal would be consistent with section 2.1 of the provincial policy statement. Within their um, comments provided to the township, they also note that the proposed development will result in a minor increase to site imperviousness and changes to drainage pattern. Um, they are generally satisfied with the grading and drainage plan that was prepared by GSS engineers, engineering, excuse me, and they conclude that the proposal is consistent with section 2.2 of the provincial policy statement. Through the process of, um, of building the home, the Mishlers will be required um, to provide a certification after the home is built. That certification is from the engineer who designed the grading and drainage plan. Um, that plan, um, along with being reviewed and accepted by the Conservation Authority, was reviewed and accepted by the um, Director of Operations at the Township. Section 3 of the Provincial Policy Statement um, directs development away from areas of natural or human-made hazards. The Conservation Authority identified the natural hazards on the property are associated with a steep slope and watercourse features. So the, they note that those hazard features are zoned appropriately in our zoning bylaw and that the development that is proposed is actually outside of that EP zone. The mapping um, for the, um, in the zoning bylaw um, provides for an adequate setback and they don't, um, th their conclusion is that the, um, there's no additional 15 meter setback necessary from the EP zone um, from a natural hazard uh, perspective. They conclude that the proposal is consistent with section 3.1 of the PPS. So just as a point of clarification, in the township zoning bylaw, there is a mapped EP zone, and that is that covers the the natural or hazard or heritage feature. The 15 meter setback to that zone is to provide further um, further protection to that mapped feature, unless a um, an environmental impact study is conducted and and it is determined that there is no need for that zone and that's what there that setback i'm sorry and that's what is happening what that is what the result of this application is there is adequate um, protection there for that feature so the comments um, are the conservation authority comments are attached in their entirety for council's review 
So while the property is zoned um, rural and environmental protection, um, the entire property is, the measures are only seeking to rezone a portion of the property and that's at the north end um, of the lot. And having a zero meter setback to the EP zone doesn't mean that they're going to build right up to the EP zone uh, within that area. It's effectively a, a designated development envelope that would be reflected in a site plan agreement and would be reflected in the site specific zoning amendment as well. So through the, um, th there's recommendations, mitigation measures recommended in the, in the environmental impact study and staff support the recommendation to utilize site plan control to delineate the development envelope and to incorporate the mitigation measures to protect the natural heritage features on the site. So if council approves a bylaw, um, amendment for this property, it will effectively allow development to occur in the north end of the property. There will be no other development on the balance of the property. So comments, um, the application was circulated to residents and to various agencies. We received comments back from the Conservation Authority. Um, they note no objections to the approval of the um, amendment to allow for residential use on the property in the northern portion and to reduce that EP zone setback to um, zero meters. They note that consistency with 3.1, sorry, section 3.1 of the provincial policy statement has been demonstrated. Ontario regulation 15106 does not apply to, the, does apply to the subject site and they do require um, the applicant to submit a permit application. Consistency with sections 2.1 and 2.2 of the PPS have been demonstrated and the subject site is not located within an area that is subject to the policies contained in the Saugeen Grey Sobble Northern Bruce Peninsula Source Water Protection Plan. The Grey County Planning Department uh, provided comments um, just uh, noting that as long as, as long as positive comments are provided by the Conservation Authority, um, they have no further concerns with the subject subject application. They do request notice of any decision rendered with respect to this application. The City of Owen Sound um, provided uh, comments in a staff report. Um, they were seeking clarification um, uh, on the following. Uh, so the um, per the staff report, uh, I did summarize some of their comment. Um, they are asking. Um, it would be helpful for county and or township planning staff to confirm the rationale for servicing of the residential development with East Linton Water Services when the subject lands are not located within a designated secondary settlement area of East Linton. So as I mentioned in the, in the um, brief policy review, the property is located between two settlement areas. Uh, originally, it was part of a settlement area. It was, um, in 1995, identified um, as residential in the Sarawak official plan. And since then, um, it has, um, the lands have since been uh, redesignated into rural hazard and a portion of it is, is inland lake and shoreline. The, um, the water line does run in front of the property. It actually, um, it actually, um, um, runs on two, two of the lot lines and a connection was allocated for this, this property because it was part of a, part of a plan of subdivision uh, in the past. So um, that's the justification for, for the property being able to connect to water despite its designation. The, um, additionally, the county official plan recognizes um, existing, existing um, services and it, it does direct um, new development to connect to those um, to those services. So this application does comply with with the um, with the county official plan. Um, the second comment was related to a rural designation. That's the the comment was really specific um, to the creation of lots in a rural area and not applicable to this application. <clears throat> Um, they bring attention to the fact that the lands are designated hazard um, and contain significant woodland and they are just um, providing comments that the county 
uh, should be satisfied the proposal is consistent with the policies of the provincial policy statement um, and the rural and hazard land designation policies of the county OP. So as I mentioned, pre-consultation on, on the EIS um, did occur. It occurred actually in July of 2019. And, um, and uh, the EIS itself was conducted by a qualified professional. The Conservation Authority reviews the, uh, um, the EIS on behalf of the township and um, they are satisfied with the findings of that document. Uh, if you look at the, um, the, county, um, the county official plan, it does defer to the Conservation Authority as well for their opinion on um, whether or not um, development within those the hazard areas and heritage areas um, um, is, is appropriate and the Conservation Authority comments have concluded um, that it's fine. Um, the city planning staff requests a copy of the counties, townships and conservation authorities comments on the matter and a copy of any further notice respecting the application. Copies of the uh, staff report have been provided to the, um, to the county as well as to this, the city planning staff. So this application um, was circulated to all property owners within, within 120 meters of the subject property. Um, Comments were received from residents. They are summarized uh, in the planning report and complete submissions have been attached to the, um, the planning report for council's review and consideration. Jen, you're muted. Sorry about that. I don't know how that happened. Somebody muted me. <laughs> um, the uh, okay, so the application was circulated to the residents. Um, the comments in the report are summarized, and the um, the complete uh, submissions are attached to the report for council's review. Concerns identified um, through the circulation of this application include um, light pollution, area drainage, and impact to environmental features. So the comments um, related to drainage were specific to the application uh, in that the concern is from the area residents is that um, is that new house that's being built, is it going to further impact the drainage problems in the area? So as council is aware, residents in Bombay Beach um, have reported significant flooding events and associated uh, property damage in the recent past. So properties on the east side of Bombay Beach uh, road have experienced damage to driveways and flooded basements due to water flowing over the roadway and down uh, into the drive down the driveways and into their homes. So, in response to the comments that uh, staff received on this application, um, I did I did um, visit the area with the director of operations, and what we observed was that the ditches along Bombay Beach Road have been filled in, and. Um, and they're not accommodating the volume of water that they originally, the volume of water that they were originally designed to. Uh, operations staff are actually in the process of remediating the ditches to their to their original design standards, and um, in an effort to help alleviate drainage issues in the area. So the Mashler property does receive all of the drainage from the lots in the Lakeview subdivision, and um, that drainage goes into the ditches on on the property as well as the pond and that water that drainage feature then does occupy a substantial portion of their property uh, the township uh, in 2019 um, the property owners at that time did grant the township a drainage easement and um, as part of the 2022 budget the um, that feature is um, is going to be properly maintained. And I just want to note that um, because it contains the pond as well as the, the drainage ditches, staff are aware that um, um, of the need to um, obtain permits from the Conservation Authority. And we are aware that um, ditching uh, will only be able will be will occur during a specified window and that's to help protect the natural um, 
uh, features that, that are on that property. So just um, to um, continue on, specific comments were received from um, Bill O'Connor and Mr. O'Connor noted concerns about changes to a strategic water catchment area without knowing how this approval will affect the further displacement of groundwater towards the bay. My concern is how these proposed zoning changes and setbacks will affect the catchment area that was clearing designed and preserved for groundwater management in mind. I would like to go on record in requests in requesting further investigation, planning and implementation of groundwater control prior to any amendments to the current environmental zones and the granting of setbacks. Uh, and as I mentioned, the full comment letter is attached uh, to the report. So just as a res staff response, operation staff have reviewed the original drainage plan and have scheduled ditching to take place along Balmy Beach Road. They are currently waiting for utility locates to be completed as well. Comments were received from Shauna McIver. Ms. McIver notes two concerns with a proposal related to the environmental protection specifically for wetlands and setting a precedent by approving a zero meter setback to the EP zone. Her full comments are attached to the report. The staff comment in response is an EIS conducted by a qualified consultant was submitted by the applicant identifying the development envelope as the preferred location. Um, <clears throat> applications for amendments, uh, as we have discussed before, are site specific. So, um, council's decisions for a zoning amendment application do not sent do not set a precedent for future applications because each value each application needs to be evaluated on its own merits against applicable policy. Randy Vogel, uh, Mr. Vogel would like to be notified of any decision related to this application and he expressed concern with additional development on the lot. So just as a staff response, um, given the environmental um, constraints on the property and um, the lack of, of um, access to, the, to this lot, uh, additional residential development will not be permitted. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Barry Hargrave, Mr. Hargrave requested to be notified of any decision related to this application. He expressed concern with development being permitted near an environmentally protected area and within an area with drainage features. He noted concern with an increase in surface water flow. Sorry, he noted concern that an increase in surface water flow has the potential to result in additional siltation to Owen Sound. Um, the full comments um, provided by Mr. Hargrave are attached to the report. Additionally, Mr. Hargrave is here this evening um, as a participant in the meeting. Um, Olga Granier, uh, Mrs. Granier expressed concerns, excuse me. Mrs. Granier expressed concerns with the new residential development resulting in traffic activity and noise where there was none before, uh, light pollution and loss of privacy. The following concerns were raised, set back to the environmental protection zone. Um, and she was asking if it applies to the entire EP boundary. And um, it only applies to the, um, the area that is subject to the amendment. So it's specific. Um, it doesn't apply to any other area on the property. And it, does it mean that the, um, does a zero setback mean the property owners are free to eradicate all vegetation and alter the landscape right up to the EP boundary? Um, no, it doesn't. So the property is regulated by the Conservation Authority and I've provided specific comments um, about the regulation under Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act in the report under that, that, that the section um, for her comment. Um, any one all seeking to um, alter a site or develop within a regulated area needs to seek permission from the Grace Oval Conservation Authority first. So um, any any alteration um, on the property that falls outside of a regulated area, um, similar to all the other properties in Georgian Bluffs, landscaping would be permitted. Um, the environmental impact assessment did not consider the impact of reducing the EP zone setback to zero meters, which means that it technically does not support the proposal. Shouldn't a reassessment be conducted? 
the EIS supported the proposed site for development with a full 15 meter setback in place, not zero. So in just response to that, the EIS um, evaluated a development envelope and assessed the environmental features within that area. It identified a preferred development area and identified mitigation measures to support the development. It's correct that the report did not mention a, um, a zero meter setback for all structures, um, but what the it did is it evaluated the features on site. And sometimes when we, when we look at the application of mapping for zoning, it's not um, it's not ever proposed to be 100% accurate. We know with mapping there are always errors, so the mapping when it first comes out is very general um, and represents a, a, a feature conducted through a desktop exercise. When we have a, an environmental consultant go on site, they're better able to evaluate the specific features against the provincial policy and provide a recommendation uh, on whether or not it is, um, it is appropriate to develop in that area. Uh, two other concerns were drainage. Um, drainage on the property, the um, applicant's engineer is, um, is present this evening to further explain the, um, the proposed drainage plan and the impact on the surrounding area and would be able to answer questions from council or residents. And the other um, concern that Ms. Granger had was the with light pollution. So generally, um, dark sky friendly lighting is addressed in subdivision agreements. There does not appear to be a subdivision agreement for the Lakeview subdivision. Um, it, um, but a concern can be addressed. That concern can be addressed in the uh, the site plan agreement, um, it, just to alleviate uh, Ms. Granger's concerns there. Um, I did provide the full comment letter for this report um, for everyone to review. Comments were also received from Bill Lamkin. He asked for additional information on the proposed development. Um, Steve Quinlan also asked for additional information on the proposed development. So in conclusion, the um, uh, this report, um, the recommendation is to just receive this report for information at the time, at this time. Um, there are um, um, residents who um, would like to address council, so it would be premature to make a, a um, any decision on the application at this time. Um, and I believe the um, the applicant, her engineer, and environmental consultant are here, and there are a number of wish residents wishing to provide comment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senior Planner Jen. Jeffrey Robbins, Bill Connell, Barry Hargrove, Shauna McIver have registered to participate this public meeting. First, I'm going to go to Mr. Robson. Please go ahead. Any comments? Yes, it's uh, Jeffrey Robbins. Do you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, um, I live across the road at 451 Balmy Beach Road. Just to be on the record, I am 100% in favor of this proposal. I have no issues with the house going on that property. No issues whatsoever, except, except. I would like to see the stormwater management report detailing the pre and post development runoff qualities, how much water will be running off. Because my concern only is that back in 2002, I installed 36 inch uh, drainage pipe from the top of my property down to the end. Each section is 20 feet long, and I installed at least 11 of them. At least 11 with, with on my dime, all right? I paid for it all. My concern is that right now, the township will continue to direct more water towards me, not just because of this home, all right? and and. And Ms. Burnett had mentioned uh, drainage easement with other properties. You do not have a drainage e easement on my property. The township never has had one. 
All right. Like I moved in in 2001. We did the ditch in 2002. And then you, you do not have a drainage easement on my property, but you continue to dump a lot of water on my property. And it goes through this 36 inch diameter that on storm days is filled. Is filled, and I can see why Bill or Connor would be apprehensive of this because he's right beside me. All right, like he lives just to the north of my property. So I will reiterate: I am one hundred percent behind the the uh, development of this house. I would like to see the people, uh, you know, live there. I have no issues with that. I think it's great that we have this to be done i hope you pass this for these people they've probably gone through enough and i am fully um you know uh i have great how would i say confidence in gss engineering they do they have done a good job and their due diligence but i think that i think you have to address the fact that you do not have an easement on my property to dump the, the continued water from your Developments above the hill, all the way down to the water, and there's never been. And I've I've asked back in 2002. At that time, it was Larry Miller. He was the reeve, and uh, nothing was ever done with it. So that's my comment. I thank you very much. And again, my name is Jeffrey Robbins, 451 Balmy Beach Road. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey. Uh, your comments have been well noted by staff, and thank you very much. I'm going to move on now to Mr. O'Connell. Please go ahead. Mr. O'Connor, are you there? Oh, okay. I'll move on then. Uh, Mr. Barry Hargrave, please go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm at 561 Balmy Beach Road, so I'm way down the road uh, from the subject property. But I've been talking to neighbors and um, I know from walking up and down the road, the marshy conditions in the property. And I see that the drainage ditches are being cleared actually again today. And I compliment staff uh, and Ms. Burnett on how uh, that was undertaken so rapidly. It's something that many of the residents on Bombay Beach Road uh, observe all the time and we have had flooding over the roads so I appreciate I really do seeing the work being done however I'd point out and I'd actually echo in a way Mr. Uh, uh, Robbins comments you realize that all the water that comes into the ditches on Bombay Beach Road anywhere along Bombay Beach Road all that water every drop of it goes into Owen Sound it's all running downhill and it only goes across the road and down through the big culverts. Now, we have a, a, a culvert under the road in front of us, and we have a stream, an open stream, that receives water from the high ground, the hazard lands right above us, right above our house, on the other side of the road, the east. Very high ground. And the reason I'm a little sensitive to all this, or I'm aware of the potential problems, because some of you will remember 10 years ago, the discussions surrounding the Georgian Estates subdivision development above us. This is all of the high land above Bobby Beach Road from Harold Sutherland's house down to beyond us. So that, that area of Bobby Beach Road, very high land, and that water runs down across and through our properties. It's managed with the existing culverts and the existing uh, culverts uh, dishes. However, if you put more water into any part of that, that drainage system, as Mr. Robbins pointed out, the existing pipes won't take more water. And if you're going to be draining a, a marshy area which withholds water, which the subject lands that we're talking about uh, rezoning, that's a water retention feature, a natural one. The marshes hold the water back and release it slowly. Even developing part of it to put even one house, 
it, it's it's hard to, to know exactly whether the uh, the flow through the culvert that Mr. Robbins has just described is likely going to increase and whether it will exceed the capacity. I think uh, the council has to be very careful about approving the changes in the zoning bylaw for that lot, although it's only one lot, without a water management study for that particular area to answer Mr. Robbins' question, how much more water will go through the culvert on my property? The ditches are, are back to the normal state now and they will continue to perform their function. But if you add more water into those ditches, perhaps the drainage existing won't handle it. So thank you. That's basically my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments and they're well noted. Okay, I'm going to move on with uh, Shauna McIver. Are you there? Oh, sorry, Madam Clerk, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll just note for the record that both Mr. McConnor and Ms. McIver are not present with us this evening. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So I'll move on for our agenda then. Uh, applicant Eric Metzler is present with this evening along with engineer Rakesh Trauma and biologist. Linda Silver, Mr. Messler, do you have any comments? If you do, please go ahead. Hi, this is Mrs. Meshler, and my name is Aaron. <laughs> so oh, Eric sorry. was the previous applicant, no worries. Um, yes, yeah, so again, I, I would just like to introduce myself to my neighbors and, and also to um, address their concerns as well by having invited Linda Sober from Star Environmental and having Rakesh Sharma with us from GSS Engineering. Um, again, just to introduce myself. Um, so my name is Aaron Meshler, but I was formerly Aaron Westover. Um, and I grew up in Georgian Bluffs on Bass Lake. And my family has been there for about 38 years now. And uh, I recently returned to Georgian Bluffs with my hu husband, Andreas Meshler uh, from Germany. And we're planning to you know, settle here with our family. And uh, we have long-term plans of, of residing in Balmy Beach. Um, because it is a place that is is really important and, and sentimental to myself and and my family. Um, so over the last year, as you guys know, I have um, conducted the studies. It's been an ongoing effort, lots of discussions with the township and uh, with Grace Alba Conservation. And I have done everything that they've requested um, to ensure that this will be um, you know, an appropriate building site for us. Um, again, I will let the professionals speak to the setbacks as well as the, the drainage. Um, but I will also let you know that I personally have a degree in conservation biology from the University of Toronto. Um, so I did discuss a lot about these topics with, uh, with Linda. And um, it's very much to my interest and my family's interest that this is taken, uh, this on taking is done with the utmost sensitivity. And so we will be cooperating with the township as well as the, the Gray Sable Conservation uh, to mitigate any of the issues you guys have, especially to do with light pollution um, and taking into consideration the, um, the recommendations coming from, from Linda. Um, yes, and I, I will let um, Rakesh Sharma go ahead or, or um, Linda to address any of the, the questions you guys might have. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead, Rakesh. Thank you. Uh, so GSS Engineering has prepared the site grading and drainage plan for uh, the proposed uh, development or the house construction. Uh, before, I, before I talk about what changes have been done, so generally the site is grading from the, uh, the, the area to the north is grading, uh, is, is grading towards the, the east, but that is an area to the north of the, the proposed driveway. So that's the existing natural drainage. And the area to the south of the, the proposed driveway, actually a portion of the driveway already exists. We could call it a pre-existing condition. So the area south of the proposed driveway is actually draining to the existing water course and the pond. Now, the area that is being developed or being disturbed is minuscule as compared to the overall land area that uh, the, the proponent owns. So if I were to calculate the pre-development runoff and the post-development runoff, 
I would say it will be almost the same considering the small amount of impervious area that we are uh, we are creating. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are providing a cutoff uh, swale to 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 the northwest of the the proposed house. So what that will do is the roof leaders will be directed into that swale, and eventually the water will flow back towards the this existing natural water course. By pro by providing the swale, what actually will that do is it will uh, divert the water away from the house and and eventually bring it to the 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 swale or existing uh, water course. And in our analysis, typically what that does is it slows down the water flowing into the drain. So let's say if, if at this property, uh, the water course was peaking at one hour. What I mean by that is, I mean, the, the entire area that is draining into this uh, natural drain or water course, if the peak flow during a rainfall is happening at the end of about an hour, anything that is happening or any flow that is coming from other ditches, drains or area before that one hour or after that one hour will not affect the peak flow. So since we are so close to this area, I would think that there should not be any impact on the increase in the peak flow. Now, where all this water is going? All this water is going into the existing drain that is also running north-south, actually flowing from north to the south. So that easement will continue to get uh, the flow from this property. And, and as I mentioned, there would not be hardly any uh, impact on uh, any increase in, in the flow. Now, when I went to the site during a rainfall event, uh, I noticed that, I mean, actually it was uh, described by Jennifer in her uh, discussion, her, in her presentation. Uh, there are there are a existing ditch that is running north-south on, on the west side of the road. And they are supposed to be uh, the culverts under the driveways but the rest of the area should remain open or the ditches should not be covered. So now when you cover the ditches, uh, when you fill in the ditches and replace them with the pipe flow, what that would do is the water that should be flowing slowly in the, the ditches and providing some ponding and storage, you have eliminated that by providing a culvert. So now the water is going to come down faster and, and more. Uh, into these ditches, and that's why maybe uh, the property north of 451 uh, kind of gets some water when uh, the ditch overflows and runs down towards the uh, towards the lake uh, through the easement between 451 and the property north of that. I do not have that number. So in a nutshell, I mean, I don't think the the construction of this house is going to affect. Uh, the the situation the the yes I agree there may be a existing condition but would this construction of the house aggra aggravate the problem I would say no if there is any more specific questions uh, about uh, what I have said uh, please uh, feel free to ask them thank you Rakesh uh, Linda do you have any comments and yes, I do, uh, Mayor. Just one moment. Let's see if I can. There we go. There, I did it. Okay, I don't know how to make my screen bigger, but can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, just a couple of brief comments um, to respond to Jen's earlier uh, note about. Um, light pollution from one of the uh, neighbors. It's a, it's a great point. And from my point of view and the work I do, it's never that much about humans, but about all the crepuscular and nocturnal um, animals that could be in and around that area. 
Um, and when we light up the area too much, even with the odd street light that's on this street right now along, along Bami Beach, ah, it throws things out a bit of whack there for the ecosystem because it acts like a flashlight and lights up uh, the, the uh, animals for the other predators in the area. If you're a hawk and you're looking for a squirrel, it sort of fishes out the area, you know, and um, it changes the balance of things. So in my mitigation measures in table one, um, point seven, and these are measures that I like to get carried forward, captured in site plan control. One of them is to um, safeguard the low light conditions currently. I mean, it'd be great to make them all better up and down the street. Um, but for the crepuscular wildlife, like salamanders per se, um, some of the evening birds, um, that we would limit um, the lighting, uh, use downward directed hooded lights, they're called hooded lights, but they just they just have blinders on the side, like blinders on a horse, um, versus the barn style lights that the huge ones that illuminate far too much. And we just don't need that for a single residence um, to maintain the night sky condition. And there's benefits there for you know recreational viewing, certainly for humans, but I'm targeting that mitigation specifically to all the other animals <laughs> under the provincial policy statement. Um, and as well, as far as the function of the, um, the pond feature there, and I recognize it was a dug pond at some time. There's a weir structure in it and it's created, but the animals don't know that, right? So they're there and there's gorgeous dragonflies in there, a number of different flycatcher birds, and they, they require that sustained water. Um, it's, that pond isn't kept there just simply by spring freshet. It needs um, persistent uh, a way to hold out the rain, rain, rainfall. So um, in any future cleanouts, for instance, of any easement, I think we all have to work together there with Grace Sobel Conservation Authority um, and certainly the municipality just targeting their specific timetable there to um, for the easement drains every, I don't know what your operation schedules are there, every five year rotation or whatnot, but to avoid the breeding bird schedules and um, get in there at the right time of year. Um, and one of the mitigative measures that um, speaks to that is um, and, and trying to deal with more directing rainwater on site there, capturing it as it is being captured now. So the driveway, even we're recommending restrictions on asphalt to say limit, we're limiting the driveway to um, pervious surfaces. And we're not so heavy handed to say, oh, it must be crushed granular, a gravel, or must be interlocking brick, but there's a number of options where the material that you place on the site will continue to allow rain to percolate through the interstitial spaces of all the, the little the material you're using. So that's also a recommendation in the mitigation um, to be applied, um, the planning tool to apply that being site plan control. We've seen, we've, we've got some good efficacy on that where that works over time. Um, and I think uh, there was also a comment about forests and just wanted to clarify that the, the pond feature, um, that's where we've measured our 15 meter setback from, um, that development can't encroach any closer to the pond than 15. And that was a measurement uh, ground truth on site um, to safeguard things, not just the pond, but safeguard some tree species like uh, a quite an old willow tree. And I recognize a willow um, that particular species is not a native species. However, it's well over 100 years old from, from my calculations and uh, worthy of the setback from the drip zone to maintain it. So that's where part of the siting of this dwelling came to be. And also just primarily because it's an upland uh, dry area for where the home would be um, that's previously disturbed. And I don't know all the settlement history there as far as uh, you know, 200 years ago, but definitely there's clearance. When you get feral apple trees and things like that, you know that there has been some settlement um, in the area. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to, I think um, Ms. MacGyver's comment was about wetland, and there's certainly wetland on that parcel, the 17 acre parcel. There's wetland mosaics in the south portion of it as well, um, but the area for where this home would be is predominantly open. There's picnic tables there right now. Um, 
and the tree type surrounding it are early succession trees of the younger. Uh, so there was even more of a clearing before. If you continued walking west, you would hit more sand deposit and you would hit the scarp that is part of the EP, uh, the upland, and climb that gingerly and you'd be right in the background of uh, what was that? Lake, Lake, Lakeview Road. So uh, Lakeshore Road. Yeah, Lakeview Crescent. Yeah, road or Crescent. So um, that's the connectivity there. But the tree species, uh, I pulled from my field notes just to refresh everyone. Um, white cedar, white birch, a um, lot of poplar, which is trembling aspen and large tooth aspen, um, basswood, sugar maple, white ash, um, black cherry, white pine, uh, American elm. So definitely in the area proposed for this home, um, that's those are upland species indicative of uplands and and none of us are proposing a home in a wetland. I just wanted to make that very clear. Um, I think those are my points, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, and I'm available here still for further questions. Thank you very much. You. So I'm gonna move on. Uh, does council have any questions of the applicant? Seeing none. Councilor Corbin, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You asked if we had questions of the applicant. I, I did have a question, but it's more directed towards our operations staff. Is that appropriate at this time or no? I would certainly think so. Go ahead, uh, Steve. Thank you. Uh, be prepared for the question. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you to um, to our staff, um, I, I take Mr. Robbins and Mr. Hargrave's comments to heart. I think they make some good points and their concerns are valid ones. This is not by far the first time we've heard concerns regarding stormwater runoff management in this area. So I guess my question, well, well first of all, before my question, I certainly hope we're not um, using um, the the systems that our, our um, private property owners have put in place to manage um, the runoff of water, I certainly hope we're not using that as a municipal means of dealing with the runoff problem um, because we do keep approving, approving developments that do have an overall impact on these properties. So my question, I guess, for our director of operations is, um, we have work currently uh, underway uh, regarding ditches and drainage in that area. What is um, his confidence level that those measures are going to take care of these issues and alleviate some of these concerns? And the second part of that question, Steve, if I may, is at what are we using to measure the effectiveness of the measures that we're putting into place? I certainly hope it's not um, complaints that we see in the spring. Um, I, I, I would really like to see us be proactive in determining if our measures have been, um, are being successful or if there's more we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Coburn. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Coburn. I'm going to try this out with the feedback, but okay. Um, in regards to the the questions you have there, we're going to be looking at doing. Um, it's going to be a couple of years being on Bombing Beach this year. We're kind of opening up all ditches just to get the water to flow the way it is. We are reviewing the the 1990 drainage study along with the 2016 update that was pre prepared by WSP. We are going through all that to hit all, all the recommendations that were brought forward to this council back in the day kind of deal. Um, once we do that, we'll be going through the next step. We'll be bringing a report to council for the spring of next year where we'll be looking at updating all the entrance pipes along Balmy Beach there as currently right now, they are deemed as a private entrance onto our right of way. We currently do not own those pipes. So when we are doing ditching, we are looking at what pipes need to be flushed and stuff like that, just to take a quick inventory of what's out there to kind of move us forward so that we can do a proper cost estimate and bring forward to council for their adoption. We are also looking at where our current all our out 
outfalls are. A lot of the outfalls do have an easement component there that we'll be needing to re bring back to council to kind of follow up with. But that's where we're kind of working right now. So right now we are looking at doing complaint bases based on what we have received from residents over the last few years. We're also using the 2016 drainage study along with the 1990 drainage study to kind of rectify some of the, the pain points this year. And then next year we'll be going back and to redo some more other ditching requirements. Thank you, uh, Director of Operations. A uh, question from me as a chair. Uh, Concerning the same thing, are you aware of all the drainage easements down along Bonnie Beach Road that Ms. Pelly has? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, yourself. Uh, yeah, right now with those documents, it does show us where these easements are, that we are in favor of the township, and the ones that also does note is some of the ones that are private. So we are trying to avoid to use the ones that are currently as deemed as private, but moving them into our own easements that we can maintain and rectify as we go forward. Okay, thank you. Councilor Coburn, does that answer your question? Okay, I see no other questions from council. Council will consider all matters placed before prior to submitting their comments to this applicant. May I have adjourned with this public meeting? Moved by Councilor Thompson, second by Councilor Coburn. A show of hands, all in favor, please. The motion is carried. Our next recommendation is that positive comments have been received from the agendas. Several residents have submitted comments identifying concerns with area drainage. Therefore, it is recommended that PL 2021-39 public meeting report for Z1221 Eric and Andrea Metzler be received for information. Someone to move to put it on the floor, please. Moved by Councilor Sullivan, second by Councilor Pringle. Is there any discussion on the motion before us? Show of hands, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you, everybody. So moving on to our agenda. Our next uh, item is water rates. The recommendation is that the comments received during the 2022 water rate public meetings be received for information and the staff are hereby directed to prepare a report regarding implementation of a charge for usage water billing systems. I'm going to turn it over, or first of all, I'll get someone to move put on the floor, please. Move by Councilor Pringle, second by Councilor Thompson. So now I'm going to turn it over to the Director of Operations, uh, Mr. Dahmer, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, everybody in attendance today. Uh, offer, uh, thank you once again for allowing me to speak to this. Operation staff and myself have engaged the community to gather feedback regarding the water rates of the East Linton, Shaw Lake, and Paul Wami water systems. Uh, notice of the public meeting was uploaded to the township website and shared on social media, so Facebook and Twitter. After completion of this public meeting, uh, operation staff will be sending out a letter to all the water users of the East Linton, Shaw Lake, and Paul Wami water systems. Uh, as we continue em to embrace the principles of accountability and transparency here at the township, staff will review the responses provided during this public meeting, along with the comments that we received over the last two weeks, and also the feedback from residents when we do receive confirmation back from their letters that we do send out next week to them. Um, at this tonight, this is a uh, public meeting is just simply to gather feedback from the community, and there will be no final decisions made after this public meeting. Um, staff will present a report regarding the wire rates, which is a change from the flat rate usage in the East Linton, Paul Wami and Shaw Lake uh, wire systems to a more of a user consumption rate approach. Um, included in, their, in this report, we'll be also talking about the financial impacts associated with the recommendations at the December 8th, 2021 meeting committee of the whole. So what we're looking to do is move from the flat rate system that we're currently using for the Shaw Lake. East Linton and Paul Wami water systems to more of a user pay system to compare to what we're doing in Occident water system with the South Bruce Peninsula. So if they're using 10 cubic meters of water, they should be paying for 10 cubic meters of water instead of doing a flat rate of paying for what we are currently, what they're not using. So this is what we're proposing, but we're looking for public feedback at this time. 
Thank you, Mr. Dahmer. And uh, Madam Clerk, I see no public participation in this public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, we had no one register for this public meeting. So we're going to circulate the direct letters to the people that are impacted and welcome them to the December 8th meeting to participate as well. Okay, that, that would be great. Councilor Burford, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm still mulling over what you said. I thought the system we had was working fine. What's the problem now? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Barfoot, we've received a lot of complaints from the residents over the past few years in regards to the usages of the water system. A lot of the residents are wanting to move to more of a what they are using versus what they're not using kind of approach. So, for example, if a family at home, like in if they're going away for January, they're not paying the monthly or the, the bi-monthly flat rate of what $250. If they're not there for two months, they would be paying for what they're using. Right. So instead, if they're if they're not using any cubic meters of wires, then they shouldn't be paying for it. That is what their, their concerns are. So they're kind of in pain for wire they're not using, whereas they've been trying to conserve, be more proactive on their wire consumption. Whereas, you know, some people like to use a bit more wire and then we kind of do overcharges on that. So it's always been. Ex thank you. It's always been explained in the past that it was to a total user pay it, it, it was not going to affect the rest of the municipality but when we get requests for uh, waiving fees you know like we'll say over usage and that oh, it'll be interesting to see the comments you get because there's going to be a lot of confusion over this yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Barfoot, um, we are going to be looking at that also that um, the water relief policy at the same time, as this is going to change that kind of approach as well. So we're trying to match to what currently we're doing in the oxygen water system for the other three systems that we currently have that are on a different pace setup. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Madam Kirk, it's good to see that this is coming back to Council. And whose hand was up? Council Colburn, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Many of the questions I had, I think, will be addressed in the in the report that will be forthcoming um, from Mr. Dolmeyer and his team. But I did, uh, just out of curiosity, wonder how many letters are going to be sent out. How many folks will this be impacting? Go ahead, Madam Deputy Treasurer. So between the three water systems, we do have approximately 1,800 connections. Okay, thank you. Yes, there's no other questions. Uh, I'll ask for a show of hands all in favor of the motion before us. The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on, we have no delegations here tonight. Correspondence. Our first correspondent is from uh, Grace Hobble Conservation Authority. Does any member have any comments on the proposed budget? Deputy Mayor Carlton. I do, and I think some of my questions is in particular about how much was coming out of reserves has been answered today by Tim Lanthier and I think shared with everyone. So I'm okay there on that amount but i have grave concern about that the amount of the increase that grace Sobel is proposing this year and i would wonder how much of an impact does that have on our budget madam uh, deputy treasurer go ahead so through you mayor when i was looking at it yes it is an increase specifically for grace Sobel of nine thousand nine hundred forty five dollars if we were to assume that no other amounts in our 2021 budget, when compared to the tax levy, the increase of $9,945 would result in a 0.0945% increase in taxes. So it is very small if we assume no other changes occurred from the 2021 budget to a 2022 budget. Okay, thank you. 
Madam Clerk, uh, would we would we be asking Mr. Lancey to come to a council meeting in the in near future? If if that's the wish of council, then absolutely we can do that. It would certainly be my wish, and hopefully the council would want the same. Uh, I believe the Councilor Barford was first. Uh, Councilor Fulbright, go ahead. Since he's coming oh, through you, Mr. Mayor, since he's coming to a future meeting, maybe he can bring the numbers with him that I want. Um, quite sure he will, Carl. You don't know the numbers I want. I don't. <laughs> okay. Um, as you know, we've been struggling, struggling with an issue for over a year. Grace Hobble Conservation Authority have not stepped up. Part of what we pay, it's my understanding, that includes enforcement. And I would like to know how much Grace Auble spent on enforcement for Georgian Bluffs. We'll say the last two years. The situation I'm talking about has only been front and forward for a year, but let's let's say two years. Those are the numbers I want, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Barfoot, and uh, I'm quite sure that he could certainly provide all that information to us. That's why I want him to come to a council meeting. Councilor, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it is a good idea to have Mr. Lanthier come and attend a council meeting. This budget and the uh, the levy um, proposal will be coming back to the board of Grace Sobel Conservation Authority on December 22nd. So we just need to um, schedule that accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. I'm quite sure we can probably ask Mr. Lancey to be at our next meeting. Absolutely. I'll connect with Mr. Lanthier to determine which meeting in November will work best. Okay, thank you. Councilor Barfoot? One that isn't overloaded with issues. Absolutely. Okay, moving on to our agenda, we're down to staff reports, which we have none. Public question period. Does any member wish to provide, uh, Madam Clerk, was there anyone registered? No. Okay, good. So I'll move on. Unfinished business, none. New business, garbage collection at the hollow development. Uh, I would now like to vacate the chair to be able to speak to this item. And uh, Deputy Mayor Carlton, would you please take over the chair for a minute? Yes, I can do that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I would like to. Uh, explain to council what this is all about. Okay, do we have a motion to put on the floor to start with this? Okay. Okay, I'd like to start with this first. I was approached by uh, residents down at uh, the hollows at Cobble Beach. Um, it's a garbage concern. Uh, they're requesting door to door garbage collection rather than the current practice, which requires homeowners to bring their waste to common spot for collection of the entire condo corporation. I don't know if council aware of the hollows, but they have to bring it, it would be like going from here to the Springmont Corner, give you an idea of the distance they'd have to go for some of these homeowners. They have to bring it down through, uh, I think it's Ironwood, I believe is the name of the road that comes out to the main road down in the subdivision, takes it to the far side of the road uh, for garbage pickup. It's kind of very, hard convenience for older people that live in that subdivision. So all I'm asking for is that I know there's agreements and so on with the condo corporation and so on down to there, but all I'm asking for is that uh, staff would consider bring a report back to look at the whole issue and see if there's any way we could accommodate this uh, concern of the ratepayers in that particular area of Cobble Beach. Go ahead. Uh, no. Oh. Go ahead, Councillor Barfoot. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So what are they asking or what are their solutions? 
Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Well, the solutions are, I want to get, bring the staff report back to outline what solutions, what we can do for these people. Uh, the concern is it's, it's a long distance. They have to bring the garbage out for pickup. And once the staff report comes back, we'll be able to outline what we are able to do to help these people out. I mean, there's nothing I don't know, but I'm waiting for that staff report to come back. That's what I want. A question that would arise for me, sorry, okay, would be, are they the only ones at Cobble Beach having to bring their garbage to a specific point? Do other people have it picked up at their door down there? I can answer that. Yes, they are the only section right now that have to, that uh, need their garbage picked up. In the areas that we haven't assumed, we do not pick up garbage there. Director Bob Ritz, go ahead. Through you, Deputy Mayor, to uh, Mayor Burley. Yeah, that's correct. Right now, the hollows is the only area where the garbage does come out from the corporal, the, the condo corpse, out to the main road of McLeese. They bring all the garbage out to where they are because it is deemed as private property. That's what the agreement states. So our garbage trucks go along McLeese, pick it up. They actually do not go into the hollow areas. Areas where there are currently no houses that are not assumed or have no occupancy, we do not go in there to pick up garbage. Once we do get an occupancy on a house that's been built or been sold off kind of deal, then we add them to the list with our waste management company. They go and pick up on that property to make sure they get it collected. But for the, the request that... Um, Mayor Burley is suggesting here, yeah, we can bring back a staff report to look at our options, but it's something that right now the current practice is they bring all their garbage out to McLeish Road. Our garbage trucks do actually do not go in there because there are some turning issues, but that's something that we can kind of look into. Thank you, Mr. Dolmeyer. Uh, Councillor Pringle, you had a comment? Yeah, I just was kind of curious as to how many properties there would be there in that hollows and Obviously, if it's just the hollows, there wouldn't be any snowball effect that affects some other area where we'd start something new. Through you, Deputy Mayor, to Councilor Pringle, when we look at our staff report, we are going to look at all the other, other areas within the township as well, because um, there are some other private roads that we do not actually go down to where they do bring garbage up to the intersection. So we'll have to be kind of looking at all aspects of the whole township. Thank you, Mr. Dolmeyer. Uh, Councillor Sutherland, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, to, through you to the director. So then when these roads are assumed, garbage pickup would be normal and, and back to like that. And that would be the way that all these other roadways down in Cobble Beach have gone and all the other subdivisions. Through you, Deputy Mayor, to Councillor Sutherland. Um, the hollows is actually a, uh, it was an agreement that was struck in by council and the corporate co uh, condo corpse to leave this as a private infrastructure. We don't actually maintain the water system within it. We don't manage the sanitary system or storm. So it is deemed as private property in there. So it's kind of one of those uh, private roads that are unopened right of that we don't have that we'd have to kind of look at more detail and bring a report back to council. Thank you, Mr. Dolmeyer. Councillor Barfoot, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Mr. Dolmeyer, I'm getting real nervous as I hear you explain all this because it's on private property. They are a condominium. They would sign a condominium agreement. I really have great fears that we could be opening a real can of worms and setting a precedence. Would you come and get my garbage for me first thing? Monday mornings, especially now that it's snowing, please. So I think at this point, what we're looking at is a staff report coming back, and then we will address it and make any motions at that point. I, Deputy, excuse me. Mr. Mayor, I would like to hear what solutions they have suggested. Ahead, I, th I think Steve should have that information too. I was never given any solution from the people down there. All they want me to do is to bring it before council to see if staff could look at the situation, see if they can go back with 
recommendations one way or the other. So it's entirely up to staff. Uh, when they look at the situation, they may come back and say there's nothing we can do. They may come back and say there is something we can do. I don't know. But I've never been asked for any solutions from that. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and through you to the remainder. Thank you. Apologies, everyone. Um, so through you, Deputy Mayor, to the remainder of council, these questions are exactly why we're recommending that a staff report be brought back rather than approving garbage collection upright, simply because this is a convoluted topic. And uh, as Councillor Barfoot has suggested, it is a private condominium association. So therefore, the condo corporation fees would also be attributed to garbage collection. So in evaluating the agreements and the uh, rights of the condo corporation we will do so through the staff report so council has all of the information they need to appropriately make a determination for this request thank you madam clerk so the recommendation i have here do we need a mover and a seconder on this okay so the recommendation is that staff are hereby directed to prepare a report regarding options for waste collection at the Cobble Beach Hollows development for consideration at a future meeting of council. Could I have someone to move and put it in the floor? Mr. Mayor and a seconder, Councillor Sutherland, all those in favor, please. Any opposed? That's carried, thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, for doing that. Our next item on our agenda is Remembrance Day celebrations. And Madam Clerk, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we haven't discussed this for a year due to the pandemic. However, given the loosening of some restrictions, the local legions are hosting Remembrance Day celebrations and would like to invite each member of council to attend as per their wishes. So in considering this, and if we remember, the Owen Sound Legion, Terra Legion, Shallow Lake slash Hepworth Legion, Wyerton Legion, and Chatsworth Legion all request presence of one particular counselor. And I leave that up to this council to determine who would like to attend which ceremony. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I would uh, like to attend the Owen Sound Senate half on behalf of Georgian Bluff. Deputy Mayor Carlton. Thank you. I'm just wondering if we have actually heard from each of these legions that they want someone there, because I read just recently that the Wyerton um, Legion was not having a normal service, that it was going to be limited attendance at the Cenotaph. So I have received correspondence from each of them requesting attendance and requesting the annual donation for a wreath. Um, Council, uh, sorry, Councilor Barford. <laughs> I think uh, the deputy mayor and I and you as well have attended every one of those locations. So I'm going to step back and let our new councillors step forward and let Councillor Pringle, I think he should be attending one. I think Councillor Colburn should be attending one. I go to them anyways. My, my father was in the war, so I'm going to let the new councillors take my place. Thank you, uh, Councillor Barfoot. So I, I'm going to go down to the wrist. The Terra Legion, council member to, uh, who would like to attend that Senate Taft. That's close to Grant's house. <laughs> I will care. I okay. volunteer Grant. <laughs> okay, thank you, Councillor Pringle. <laughs> Shall Lake uh, Hepworth Legion. I'll do Shell Lake and Hepworth this year. Good Deputy Mayor, thank you. The Warden Legion. Council Southern, thank you. And the last one, the Chasford Legion. Council Coburn, did I hear you say you're going there? Okay, thank you. 
So I'm going to read the recommendation, and Madam Clerk, you correct me if I'm wrong. The recommendation is that the following members of council attend the following local Rem Remembrance Day celebration on, on behalf of the township. Owen Sound Legion, Mayor Dwight Burley. Terry Legion, Council Pringle. Charlie Kepfer Legion, Deputy Mayor Carlton. The Warden Legion, Councilor Sullivan. Uh, Chatsworth Legion, uh, Council Colbert. And Madam Kirk, is it to attend the Legion or attend the Cenotaph? I'm just, just uh, curious. Uh, attend the Cenotaph, just respective to each of those Legions. Okay, all right. Uh, does the motion have to say that or no? No, okay. Do I summon the movement on the floor, please? Mr. Mayor, apologies, you missed one line of that motion regarding remuneration. Oh, I, okay, sorry, I was getting tired. Uh, and uh, the Chancellor of Legion will be Councilor Colburn, and that the after mentioned members be remunerated per the existing council remuneration policy for their attendance. Someone to move to put it on the floor, please. Councilor Sullivan, do you have a question? I'll get a mover uh, and a seconder was uh, Councilor Thompson. Now, Councilor Sullivan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wish to not be paid for this event. Okay, that's your choice. Just don't put it on a timesheet. Uh, Madam Clerk, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And that was going to be exactly my comment. This simply permits those in attendance to submit for remuneration should they choose to. Deputy Mayor Carlton. Just a comment, and it's something that I do. Um, I take the remuneration, donate it to the Legion that I attended because they, I often feel, can use the help. So. Good thoughts. Councilor Colburn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, will staff be connecting with the respective um, legions and letting them know and uh, passing on any pertinent information that we need in order to be at the right place at the right time? Yes, I will, Councilor Colburn. Councilor Barfoot. And I think for the new councilors, you know, it's sort of a heads up. Usually there's a legion person there that will instruct you. You lead off with your right foot. You approach the cenotaph, they place the wreath, you pay your respects for, I don't know, a couple seconds. Your poppy you should be wearing on your over your heart. And then you turn, to, when you're finished, you turn to the right and go back to the original spot. Thank you, Councilor Burfitt. Yes, uh, the, the Legion members are at each cenotaph and they will instruct who's over there how to place a wreath. Okay, so we will move on. Notice of motions. Does Madam Clerk? I believe you have to call a vote on that motion. Oh, I I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor of the motion before us? The motion is carried. Okay, moving on for agenda notice of motion. Does any council member have any notice of motion? Seeing none. So we're down to our closed session. Excuse me, the the Council of Towns of George Bluffs moving to close session at 62035 um, with the interim CEO, clerk, director of operations, and deputy treasurer to discuss one litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administration tribunals affecting the municipality or local boards. Two, personal matters about identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. And three, a proposed or pending acquisition of disposal, disposition of land by the municipality or local board. Someone to move to put on the floor, please. Moved by Councilor Barfoot, second by Councilor Sutherland. Is there any discussion on the motion before us? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? The motion is carried. So now will council members will go in and out on your uh, laptops?
we are back in open session, if you can please enable the live stream. Welcome back, Carly. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Committee went to closed session to discuss matters under open meeting exemption E, B, and C of Section 239 of the Missile Act. As a result of closed discussions, the following actions were taken. 13.1, direction was provided to legal counsel. 13.2, received for information. 13.3, direction was provided to staff and legal counsel. Um, our next meeting is November 10th at 5 o'clock. I need one more motion. A motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Councillor Colburn, second by Councillor Sutherland. If there's no more discussion on the motion, uh, uh, show of hands all in favor of adjournment. The motion is carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>